Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. I'm Captain Amaziah. Officer Yafim. Officer Yafim is with me once again. All praises to the Most High for that. Uh, another topic we're going to smash today. The topic of praying for vengeance. Praying for vengeance. This is something that the children of Israel today in modern times do not do. The church definitely ain't doing this. The church is busy saving democracy. The black church, I would say, is busy saving democracy. And, and, and when Biden or Hillary Clinton come around, they, they sing his songs and clapping with them when they want, they vote. Listen, that's your oppressor, brothers and sisters. And we're going to prove it that you're supposed to, pr you're commanded to pray for vengeance. Give me 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. I, I, let's meditate on that real quick. The Bible says, this is, Paul, this is Christ speaking through Paul. He said it's a righteous thing to re with God to recompense, to pay back tribulation to them that trouble you. Who's troubled the black man in America? Who's shooting you down like a dog in the street on camera, off camera? Who's locking you up? Who plants drugs on you? Who's doing these things? Who's got our women putting the image of our women out like they just hoes? Who's doing these things? You already know who's doing these, these things. The Edomites. That's who's doing these things. Read it again. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So what we've always been in this land, in this captivity, is in trouble. Okay. But, and what we've never had is something called justice, brothers and sisters. So we're going to read the definition of justice. Just read on down. This is dictionary.com. I want you to read the definition of justice. The definition of justice. Uh, definition one. The quality of being just. The quality of being just. Okay. Go to the next one. Righteousness. Uh-huh. Equitableness. That's number two. I'm sorry. Uh, two. two. Rightfulness or lawfulness. Okay. Lawfulness. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, three, the moral principle determining just conduct. The moral principle determining just conduct. Okay, go ahead. Definition four, conformity to this principle as manifested in conduct. Read. Uh, five, the administering of deserved punishment or reward. Ah, that's the one I want right there. That goes with Second, Lord, second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Read it again. Read it's, it slow. It says the administering. The administering. Of deserved punishment. The administ justice is the administering of deserved punishment. Black people don't know nothing about justice in America. Right. We don't know a damn thing about that. About the people that put us in slavery getting deserved punishment for it. Leviticus 26, 6, 17. And the rest of that says deserve uh, punishment or reward. They don't deserve a reward. They deserve punishment for what they did to the children of Israel. Right. Read. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 16. I also... 17. I'm sorry, verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. Uh-huh. They that hate you... They that hate hate you, brothers and sisters, shall reign over you. So the people that hate your guts. Read from the top again. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you. No, I'm sorry. Read 16. Verse 16. I will also do this unto you. God said, I'm going to do this to you. I will even appoint over you terror. I will appoint over you terror. So in this lane here, they say the, 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 um, they say that the, Eden, the um, Arab is the terrorist on this planet Earth now. But who's been terrorizing the black man on the planet Earth? Come on. We all know who it is. It's the so-called white man. Esau, Edom, Idumia. He's been terrorizing you. Read it again. I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Read. Consumption and the burning ague. Read. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. Read. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Read. And I will set my face against you, uh -huh. and ye shall be slain before your and enemies. And we have been slain before our enemies for 400 years now. Read. They that hate you. They that hate you. Shall reign over you. They're the ones that are going to pass policies 
to keep you redline your neighborhoods, keep you in the ghettos of America. They're going to pass policies to, 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 uh, uh, um, to further oppress you. Give me Romans 8.36. Romans chapter 8 and verse 36. We're building something here. Romans chapter 8, verse 36. Let's see what it says here. As it is written, for thy sake we for, are... For thy sake... We are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. See that? We, we, our lives are cheap here. We could be killed for less than nothing. A tail light out on your car in the, on the highway... Uh, you got you. You reach for your wallet. You get killed. A brother sleeping in his car gets killed. You are sheep led to the slaughter here in Babylon the Great. Give me Psalms thirty-five and one. So what do we do about that? Let's find out. The Book of Psalms, chapter thirty-five. And you know what's crazy? When the when a brother gets killed on camera, the devil ninety-nine percent of the time gets off. And they have a press conference about it, and they look so convincing, like, no, it's not what you saw. It's, um, it, it's, it, this is what happened. The medical doctor cleared, me, cleared the cop of what happened and so forth. He's good to go. And everybody's like, it's okay. All, all the Edomites are like, it's okay. The Negroes are going crazy in the streets, rioting, screaming, screaming, Black Lives Matter, and I am a man. You understand? So what do we do about that? That we once again, all the time, get no justice. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 35, verse 1. Plead my cause, O Lord. So now this is a psalm of David. You're never going to hear this in church. This is a psalm, a song, a prayer of King David. Read it again. Plead my cause, O this Lord. This is what we must do. We must have, we must pray to the Lord that he pleads our cause. Read. With them that strive with me. Plead. My cause with them that strive against me. Read. Fight against them that fight against me. Read. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Now go to verse 6. Verse 6. Let their way be dark and slippery. Now David said, let th these Edomites, these enemies of mine, let their way be dark and slippery. Read. And let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Do what? And let the angel of the Lord persecute persecute them. They didn't say let the angel of the Lord love them like I love them. And let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Read. For without cause they have hid for me their net in a pit. Read. Which without cause they have digged for my soul. They dig a pit for your soul, brothers and sisters. Read. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Woo! You hear that? Let that sink in your spirit, brothers and sisters. Read it again. It says, let destruction come upon him at unawares. And remember now, King David was a man after the Most High God's heart. I want you to think about that. King David was a man after the Lord's own heart. And he said what? Read it again. Verse 8, let destruction come upon him at unawares. Read. And let his net that he had hid catch himself. Into that very destruction, let him fall. Into that very destruction, let him fall into that. Give me Psalms 2 and 8. Let's stick with King. We're going to stick with, with King David for a while. Psalms 2 and 8. Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Woo! You hear what, you hear what David's praying for? Y'all you, hear what David's praying for? Which Christian is praying for that right there? Not a near one of you. Read it again. Ask of me. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the other nations for your inheritance, David. Read. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Keep reading. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Uh-huh. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Read. Be wise now, therefore. So, now, this is instruction for us. The Bible says, be wise now, therefore, O who? O ye kings. What you don't know, black man, you're supposed to be a king on this earth. You ain't supposed to be a nigger. You ain't supposed to be a trap boy. You ain't supposed to be just sleeping with all the women on the block. You're a king. Read. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. You don't even know you're the judge of the earth. That's what you're going to do. 
if you endure till the end. You're going to be a judge on this earth. Now, give me Psalms 109 and verse 1. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 109, verse 1. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. Now, there's a King David once again. He praying again. Read. For the mouth of the wicked. Who's the wicked? The wicked is Esau. That's the main wicked in the Bible. Read. And the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. Read. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. With a lying tongue. They slander the brothers all the time. Cop killer brother. Oh, he was a he was a thug. Oh, oh, he stole this. He stole a pack of gum. George Floyd was a, a, a um he he robbed somebody. Mike Brown robbed the store right before he got killed. What about that? That's what they do. They slander you. Even in your death, when you're the victim, they slander you. Well, why did why did Sandra Bland mouth off at the officer like that? You heard, you saw the tape. That's what they slander you. Go to verse six and seven. Verse six. Remember, it's talking about the same wicked. Read. Set thou a wicked man over him. David is praying now. David said. David said, set a wicked man over him. God, read. And let Satan stand at his right hand. Uh huh. Verse seven. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. Woo! Holy crap. Am I reading the Bible here? Sure. I thought there was no condemnation. What did King David say? When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. David said, let that, Lord, let that man be condemned. Condemn that man right there, Lord. Read. And let his prayer become sin. David said, let his prayer be a sin to you, Lord. Read. Let his days be few. Let his days be few on this earth, Lord. And let another take his office. And let another take. Go to verse 12. Verse 12. We're going to read 12 through 15. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Hear what David said? I thought David, I thought the Bible was all about uh, mercy, grace, and peace, and goodwill for all men on planet earth. What did King David say? Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Read. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless Children. Even his children don't don't favor his children, Lord. Read. Let his posterity be cut off. That's his children, his generations after him. Read. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let their name be blotted out, Lord. Read. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. Remember his iniqu the iniquity of his fathers, Lord. Read. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Read. Let them be before the Lord continually. Let their sins be before the Lord. Don't ever forget what they did to your children, Lord. Read. That he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Woo, woo. You hear that? that you ain't going to hear that in no Christian church, but it's in the Bible. Now, give me Luke 18 and 1. Let's go to Jesus. Let's say if Jesus prayed for everybody or, 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 or loved everything. Luke 18 and 1. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. Uh-oh. What we're about to read, Christians, Jesus said you ought always to pray. Well, the prayer we're about to read, you always supposed to do this thing right here. Let's see what Jesus says. Read. That men ought, ought always to pray and not to faint. Read. Saying. There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded so man. So this judge, remember, this is a parable, but it's told about the most high God. Read. And there was a widow in that city. That widow is told about the children of Israel. Read. And, More or less the elect. Read. And she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me, judge of mine adversary. Who's your adversary? The other nations that had your black behinds in slavery. That's our adversaries. Read. And he would not for a while. And he would not for a while. Read. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard, nor regard man, uh -huh. yet because this widow troubleth Stop me. Stop right there. Yet this widow keeps nagging me with, his, with, the, with the, 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 um, the request. Avenge me. Of when you're going to avenge me. When you're going to avenge your children, Lord, always send up those prayers. That's what we got to get in our mind. We got to continually send up those prayers. Lord, is it time yet? When? When will we get vengeance? When, when will we get justice? 
Read. Yet because this widow troubleth me, uh -huh. I will avenge her. I will avenge her because the widow is troubling, troubling me. Likewise, when we keep sending up those prayers, eventually the Lord's going to hear our prayers. Read. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Read. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Uh, you, did y'all hear what the unjust judge said? Go ahead. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? See that the elect of God is crying day and night with prayers of vengeance for what has happened to them. Day and night, day and night. Jump back up to verse 1. Verse 1. Remember, this is a prayer. Sure. Let's see what Jesus said one more time Luke, about this prayer. Chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. That men what? Always to pray. That men what? Always to pray. That men ought always to pray. What we just read, Jesus, sweet, cuddly Jesus said, you ought always to pray. For vengeance. Hmm. You understand? That's what Jesus said. Give me Revelation 6 and 9. Revelations 6 and 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. That's the elect. Read. And for the testimony which they held. Uh-huh. And they cried with a loud voice, they, saying. They, they did what? They cried with a loud voice. So they're, they're, they're nagging the most high God, too. How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see what, you see what, the, you see what the, the spirits of the elect are saying? Even in death? When are we going to, when are you going to avenge us, Lord? Go to, that was it, right? Go to Isaiah 45 and 4. Let's see who, the, who these elect are. Because remember, Luke 18 said, won't God avenge his own elect? Mm -hmm. Who are the elect? Come on. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob. My servant's sake, uh -huh. and Israel, mine elect. So now we know it's about the children of Israel. It's not about everybody. Okay, give me First Maccabees four and thirty. We're gonna read thirty through thirty-three. So no, we, we, we read about King David praying for vengeance. Christ said, "You ought always to pray for vengeance." We read about the elect in Revelation six and six and uh, uh, nine through ten praying for vengeance. Okay. Let's get Judas Maccabees. First Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 30. And when he saw that mighty army, he prayed and said, Blessed art thou, O Savior of Israel, who didst quell the violence of the mighty man by the hand of thy servant David, Read. and gavest the host of strangers into the hands of Jonathan, the son of Saul, and his armor bearer. Read. Shut up this army. In the hand of thy people Israel. Shut up this. Remember, this is a prayer now. Shut up this army in the hands of the, ar of the people of Israel. Read. And let them be confounded in their power and horsemen. Read. Make them to be of no courage. Read. And cause the boldness of their strength to fall away. Read. And let them quake at their destruction. Let these other nations quake at their destruction, Lord. Read. Cast them down with the sword. Do what? Cast them down with the sword. Do what? Cast them down with the sword uh -huh. of them that love thee. Read. And let all those that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. Go to chapter 7, verse 40. We're going to read 40 through 42. So now we're reading about King, uh, not King, Judah Maccabees. First Maccabees. Now remember, at, before battle, they always sent up prayers. For victory against their enemies, brothers and sisters. How can God love everybody if he's letting uh, um, the Israelites kill, kill off their enemies through prayer? I want y'all to really think about this thing here. Read what you got. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 40. But Judas pitched in Adassa with 3,000 men, and there he prayed. And right there he prayed, saying what? Saying, O Lord, when they that were sent from the king of the Assyrians blasphemed, Thine angel went out and smote a hundred, fourscore, and five thousand of them, 
Even so, even so, the same way that Andrew destroyed the Assyrians, destroy thou this host before us this day. Wait, they're praying for destruction. They're praying that the Lord kill their enemies, brothers and sisters. Read. That the rest may know that he hath spoken blasphemously against the sanctuary, and judge thou him according to his wickedness. Judge him, Lord, according to his wickedness. Go to Ju uh, Jude, Judith. Nine and one. Let's see about the women. Maybe just the men praying. Let's go to a righteous sister, Judith. The book of Judith, chapter nine, verse one. Then Judith fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head and uncovered the sackcloth wherewith she was clothed. And about the time that the incense of that evening was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord. Judith cried with a loud voice and said. So what Judith, okay, keep reading. O Lord God of my father. So she's praying, read. Simeon, to whom thou gave us a sword to take vengeance of the strangers. Uh-huh. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her and discovered the thigh to her shame and polluted her virginity to her reproach. For thou said, it shall not be so. And yet they did and so. And yet the other nations did so, Lord. Go to verse 7. We're going to read 7 through 14. Verse 7. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power. They are exalted with horse and man. They glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and sling. And know not that thou art the Lord that breaketh the battles. The Lord is thy name. Throw down their strength in thy power. And bring down their force in thy wrath. But they have purpose to defile thy sanctuary and to pollute the tabernacle where thy glorious name resteth and to cast down with sword the horn of thy altar. Behold their pride and send thy wrath upon their heads. Give into mine hand, which am a widow, the power that I have conceived. Smite by the deceit of my lips the servant with the prince and the prince with the servant. Break down their stateliness by the hand of a woman. Read. For thy power standeth not in multitude, nor thy might in strong men. For thou art a God of the afflicted. You're a God of the afflicted. Read. And helper of the oppressed. A helper of the oppressed. And upholder of the weak. Uh -huh. A protector of the forlorn. A savior of them that are without hope. Read. I pray thee, I pray thee, O God, my Father, and God of the inheritance of Israel, Lord of the heavens, and earth, creator of the waters, king of every creature, hear thou my prayer. Hear thou my prayer, read. And make my speech and deceit. Make my speech and deceit. To be their wound and strife. Uh-huh. And, I'm sorry, who have purposed cruel things against thy covenant, and thy hallowed house, and against the top of Zion, and against the house of the possession of thy children. And make every nation and tribe. Make to, every nation and tribe. To acknowledge that thou art the God of all power and might. Uh -huh. And that there is none other that protected the people of Israel but thou. There's none other that protected the, the people of Israel but thou, but you, Lord. Sirach 36 and 1. So what are we reading? Righteous prayers of vengeance being sent to by our forefathers and foremothers. So what the hell is wrong with us? Sirach 36 and 1. Sirach chapter 36, verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations. Lift up your hand, Lord, against the strange nations. And let them see thy power. Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. Raise up indignation. Raise up indignation. And pour out wrath. Pour out your wrath. Take away the adversary. Take away the adversary. And destroy the enemy. Destroy the enemy. Read. Make the time short. Remember the covenant. And let them declare thy wonderful works. Read. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Let him that escapes that particular wrath be consumed by the rage of the fire. Read. And let them perish that oppress the people. Woo, you got to read that slow. Let them perish, Lord, that oppress the people. What are we reading? Prayers. Let them, what? 
It says, let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Let them perish, Lord, that oppress the people. Read. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Smite and sunder the heads. Who are the heads of the rulers of the heathen? Well, you got you got your Joe Bidens, your Kamala Harris, you got your um your Putin's in Russia, you got the uh, Aminajab in in Iran and so forth. Those are the heads of the heathens, y'all. Read. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other other but we. So, in other words, judge the other nation. Take these other nations out of our way, Lord. Now, after that prayer right there, after that particular part of the prayer. What does he go back to? Keep reading. Verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 11. 11. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. Keep reading. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name. Now, after judging the other nations, have mercy on the children of Israel. Gather back the children of Israel together as from the beginning and have mercy on them. Read. Whom thou hast named thy firstborn. Whom thou hast named thy firstborn brother and sister. I'm going to end it right there. This 15 minutes with the captains. This particular class was praying for vengeance as Christ commanded you black Christians to do. Okay. I'm Captain Amaziah. I'm all Fiend. And we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.